Hello there. Even some among the Green fraternity are saying that coal is the answer right now. Just about every establishment around the globe, driven on by the UN and the WEF and the climate lobby, has been thrusting the green agenda down our throats for decades. But at the first sign of fossil fuel shortages, the whole green argument collapses as we face blackouts. If green energy was the answer, there would be no problem. The problem is, of course, the scarcity and price of natural gas and oil on the markets, mostly driven by the Ukraine-Russian war. So after decades of building windmills and putting solar panels on every available field, why do we still need gas and oil? Because gas and oil are naturally occurring energy storage facilities, and the best mines on the planet have so far been unable to match that storage capacity for wind and solar power. So as soon as the sun goes down and the wind stops blowing, out go the lights. So why on earth did the Tories allow the rough gas storage facility to be shut down in 2017? So it now comes as little surprise that with gas and oil getting more scarce and pricier, some are turning back to coal. Something that Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, predicted during his economic hurricane warning talk at the Bernstein Autonomous Conference 2022. We're not taking the proper actions to protect Europe from what's going to happen in oil in the short run. And we're not taking the proper actions to protect you all from what's going to happen to oil in the next five years, which means it almost has to go up the price. We're not investing enough money, you know, uh, to keep oil number. And for all those who love climate change, if oil prices go to 175 or 150, which I, I kind of think is in the cars, to tell you the truth, you know, not in the immediate run, but down the road, then CO2 won't go down, which is everyone predicts because people buy less oil and gas. It's going to go up because all those other countries out there, the poor countries who need oil and gas to feed and heat their, their citizens, will turn off, will not buy oil and gas, they'll buy coal. They'll buy coal. If you want to see more about his dire warning, check out my Economic Hurricane video. And if Diamond got the coal bit right, then maybe he's got the hurricane bit right as well. But the one thing that Diamond did get wrong is that it's not just the poor countries going for coal. Right now we have Germany, the Netherlands and New South Wales in Australia turning to coal. That's right. As Russia starts strangling off gas supplies to Germany, CNBC is saying that Berlin is firing up the coal plants to compensate. While according to Reuters, the Netherlands has activated its energy crisis plans and removed the cap on coal plants. And down in New South Wales, Sky News Australia reports that even the Greens there are pretending they've always had a place in their energy mix for coal, as they all realise that the green power grid is nowhere near yet ready. And here in the UK, we've delayed shutting coal plants down to help us heat our homes next winter. But as coal use ramps up across the world, that means heavier demand. So I guess the price of coal will also ramp up. And according to Business Insider, the price of coal has increased by 135% in the last six months, from about $150 US a tonne to $345. And this increased coal use could go on for quite a while. Why do I say that? Because for some reason or another, one Greta Thunberg appears to have been kept out of the media limelight for nearly a month now. The eco-warrior rhetoric, it seems, is being toned down. Well, for now, anyway. <laughs>